In this video, I want to show you recording MIDI in Reaper 7. Now, before we start recording some MIDI, I want to download a free VST instrument plugin we could use in Reaper from a third party site. While Reaper does come with a few, this one is a bit simpler and will more easily demonstrate how we can create a quick musical part using just this one plugin. So let's search in our browser for IOTA Mini. Then we should wind up on this site. And we could download it for free right over here for Windows and Mac. Just choose it, add your email, and download it here. And once it's installed correctly, we could reopen Reaper. So if we're using a USB MIDI controller, we need to first set it up to work in Reaper. Download any drivers it may need, then we could open up the preferences. Control P on the PC, Command Comma on the Mac. And that opens up this dialog. In the previous video, I showed you for audio, we can go to the device settings and set up where a computer audio interface is plugged in. But for this video, we're going to focus on the MIDI devices, a MIDI controller hooked up to your computer, assuming you have one. For me, I plugged in this one. I can double click it. I can give it a special name and set up the inputs over here. But we could also set up their inputs over here. Just click it here for the input, for all inputs, and also for control inputs. If you want to use your MIDI controller to trigger actions in Reaper. But we're not going to do that now. Hit OK. And we're ready to create a new track. Double click over here. I'm going to start off with a drum track. So we'll name it Drums. Then we'll go to record and set up our MIDI input. Right now it's set up for audio, but I could choose input MIDI down here and choose that keyboard, all channels. Or we could choose all MIDI inputs, all channels, or the virtual MIDI keyboard, which I'm going to show you in a minute, which you could use to trigger MIDI using our computer keyboard. I'm going to choose all MIDI inputs, all channels right here. Then I'm going to go to the view menu and choose the virtual MIDI keyboard right here, which shows up down here, where we can see our MIDI notes come in or even trigger them from here by clicking on them. Notice it shows up on the meter. I'll use our computer keyboard using the keys right here, like C or V, to trigger MIDI using the computer keyboard. But I'm going to use my MIDI keyboard, which will still show up down here when I play it. And again, it shows up here on the meter. But you notice we don't hear any sound. Because to hear sound, we need to trigger a sound source or VST virtual instrument plugin. So go to the effects on the track. And then we'll search in the filter IOTA Mini, which is the plugin we just installed on our system. I'll choose it right here, double click. And it looks like this. Now, if I play my MIDI keyboard, we hear that sound. I'm going to start off recording some drums. So I'm going to choose the Trap Drum Kit 6, which looks like this and sounds like this. And again, we could trigger it with MIDI, just like that. So now let's record a drum part. I'm going to record in loop mode, which you could set up by turning on our grid and snapping, and drag over here to create a time selection that's four bars long. And turn on looping down here, so the section is going to loop as you record. But to make MIDI loop recording better, I'm going to go to the record mode and choose over here, record MIDI overdub which is going to overdub our recording, meaning it won't erase the previous pass or notes as we record new notes on the next pass. I'll turn on the metronome and right click it, set it up to run the metronome during recording and create a count in before recording that's one bar long. So let's record our first pass, starting with the kick and snare.
Notice it looped and didn't erase the first pass. So now we could add a clap on top, and it won't delete the first pass. As you could tell, that was very sloppy, but we could fix our timing by double clicking the MIDI item. Double click, and that opens up the MIDI editor. Where we can see the MIDI notes we recorded. Here's our kick, our snare, and the clap. And we can delete notes by double clicking, or add notes just by dragging like this to add in our notes, or move them. But because the performance was sloppy, we should quantize the notes, which means putting them right in the grid so they're perfect. So we'll go up here to the toolbar and hit this button, which opens up the quantize dialog. I'll set it to manual, all notes, and eighth notes. Hit OK, and now it's quantized. This over here was off, so I could drag it over here, and now it sounds like this. And we can adjust the velocity, let's select all, and drag these up to be full volume. Perfect. So now let's record a bass part. But instead of creating a new track, as we're going to use the same plugin on all of these, let's just duplicate this track. Right click it, duplicate track, double click and delete this part, rename it bass, take this track out of record, and change the preset on this track. For bass, I'm going to choose the Sata Wait rumble sound, which sounds like this. And let's record the bass part. And again, we could double click it to edit the part. It looks like this. And again, we'll quantize it, but this time we'll quantize it to quarter notes and the position and the note end. So the length of the notes will be on the grid as well. Make this shorter. Perfect. Close this, and let's record the next part. Make the track smaller, duplicate this track. We'll name this one Keys, as we're going to record some chords on this track. Double click to delete this part, open the plugin, and we'll change the preset. This time we'll choose under Keys Eternity, which sounds like this. There's a bit too much reverb. Bring it down, bring down the release. We're just gonna play chords like that. But to save ourselves time, instead of quantizing it afterwards, as you can tell, I'm a pretty sloppy keyboard player, we can quantize it on the way in. Right click here, go down here to track recording settings, input quantize. And that opens up this dialog, and we could turn on input quantize right here, which will quantize on the way in, or at least apply quantize right away. We'll set it up 
to be quarter notes. I want to record the keyboard part. That sounds a lot better as it quantized on the way in. But check out the MIDI anyway by double clicking. And it looks like this. Let's make the notes even by selecting them all, right clicking, and go down here to Event Properties. And we'll adjust the length to be exactly the same for each note. Apply it. And it looks like this and sounds like this. Perfect. So finally, let's record a plucked part, which is basically the melody for this song. Make this smaller, take this out of record and duplicate it. Rename it. Delete this part. Go to the preset. And this time we'll choose on the pluck, pluck soft, which sounds like this. Let's remove the reverb, make the release a bit shorter. Now it sounds like this. Now let's record this part. And because we duplicated this track, input quantize is already on. But let's change it to be set to eighth notes and quantize the note offs. So this time, the note on and offs will be perfect. Let's record that part. Notice how imperfect I recorded it, but how good it sounds on playback. Sounds pretty good. Now to mix it, we could hide the virtual MIDI keyboard so you can see the mixer over here and then blend it part by part. Sounds good. So that's pretty much it. That's recording MIDI in Reaper 7. I hope you learned something. Hope you could use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys. Let's go. Oh!